Hi guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about five supplements which you could be taking, which if you are, may be negatively impacting or damaging or hurting your thyroid gland or thyroid function in your body. So obviously we care about these things because many of you are taking over the counter supplements. You may not know the secondary side effects that some of these supplements have and how they're impacting other organs or other tissues in your body. So we're going to sort of uh, level the playing field here and talk about these supplements and how they might be affecting uh, your thyroid gland. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating people with thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, in help, of course helping people lose weight. So let's get into our topic today, which as, as I mentioned was supplements that hurt or damage your thyroid. But I want to put a little modifier on this this hurt statement that I'm that I'm putting here. So really what I'm talking about by hurting um, is really impacting your thyroid function in your body. So I want you to think outside of the thyroid gland itself and more about how these nutrients can impact thyroid function. And this will make a lot more sense once I dive into these things. So number one is iron. So iron is really important is a really important nutrient for many patients who have hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. And the reason is simple. As you have low thyroid function, you tend to have low, um, let me put thyroid here so I, that makes sense. As your thyroid function decreases, your iron tends to drop as well. So what do these patients do? Well, of course they take iron because iron is required to help your thyroid function, which makes sense, right? So where is the problem here? Now, iron itself doesn't negatively damage or impact your thyroid gland, but what it does do is it can impact your thyroid hormone. So especially if you're taking something called T4, which is found in almost all thyroid medications except for Cytomel, Lyothyronine, and Sustain Release T3. So medications like Synthroid, Level Thyroxine, Tyrosine, Levoxyl, et cetera, all of these medications have a T4 um, component to that medicine. And what iron is doing is it binds to it, so this is a little bind, a little binding symbol here, and it binds to um, the T4 molecule in your thyroid medication and it renders it inactive and it makes it so your body can't absorb it. So even if you're swallowing your thyroid medication, even if you're taking the amount that your doctor says to take, it's not getting into your blood because it's not making it past your intestinal tract. And iron is responsible for this thing. Now, so that does that mean that you need to Stop taking your iron and you know never take it again? No, of course not. But what it means is you have to take it correctly. So if you are using iron, which again, if your levels are low, you should be taking it because it will positively impact your thyroid provided it's taken correctly. And part of that taking it correctly is waiting four hours after you take your thyroid medication before, you're take, before you take your iron. And because of this very reason, remember, it will bind to and inactivate that medication. So remember, it doesn't impact the thyroid gland negatively, but it does impact any thyroid medication that you might be taking. So be very cautious about that. The same thing is true for calcium. Okay, so calcium does the exact same thing as iron, and these are probably two of the worst offenders, by the way. So if you talk to a pharmacist or a doctor, they'll say just take, don't take any supplements, don't take anything by mouth for probably four hours. That's usually the recommendation that they give. The reason that they're giving you that this broad time frame is because of these two guys here, iron and calcium. The other supplements and nutrients can impact it, but in a minor way, nowhere near to the degree that these guys do because they're binding to it. So the same thing that calcium does um, as iron, and that is calcium binds to the T4 subunit um, or just the T T4 thyroid hormone and makes it so your body cannot absorb it. Now, there are some other things related to calcium that we're not going to get into, um, whether or not it's beneficial to supplement with um, for other portions of your body, or, you know, whether you have bone loss and things like that. We're not going to talk about that today, but I would be cautious when using calcium or iron, especially if you have any thyroid disease and you're taking thyroid medication. If you're not taking thyroid medication, it's obviously less important and you should be able to get your iron up specifically. Calcium is another story, but be aware of that interaction. Number three is biotin. So biotin is pretty interesting. Now, biotin is often taken for people who are suffering from hair loss, right? It's one of the nutrients that is, um, has been shown to be helpful uh, in allowing hair to grow back and stimulate the hair follicle and so on. So a lot of thyroid patients, you'll recognize hair loss is a big symptom of hypothyroidism, right? So these patients start taking biotin because they want to grow their hair back. Now, the hair loss that you receive uh, or that you, that you have, the, the underlying cause of it in thyroid disease isn't necessarily fixed by taking biotin, first of all. Um, and second of all, taking biotin impacts your labs, your thyroid labs. And so it doesn't impact your thyroid function. I wanna be very clear about that. Biotin impacts your labs. So you might think to yourself, well, if it's impacting my labs, isn't it impacting my thyroid function? And the answer is no. And the reason is 
because it impacts the test. It has nothing to do with the thyroid function or thyroid levels in your body, but it renders the lab tests inaccurate. In fact, it's actually really bad because it makes it look like you have more thyroid hormone um, in your body than you really do. So what does that look like to your doctor? Your doctor thinks you are over medicated. So even when you know most of you listening to this are under medicated, which is why you have symptoms like hair loss and weight gain and fatigue, that's why you're taking biotin and all these other nutrients to try and fix the problem. And what it does is it makes it look like you are taking too much. So that will cause your doctor to cut down on your thyroid medication, T4, whatever you're taking, which will cause worsening hair loss, which may make you supplement some more and yada, yada, yada. You can see sort of how this, this cycle will continue here. Now, the key here is not that you need to avoid taking biotin altogether. The key that I want you to take from this is that you just need to avoid it for two to three days before you get your labs tested. Uh, it's kind of hard to read, but that says two to three days. So all you have to do is just stop taking it and then it will, uh, once it gets out of your system before your labs are drawn, it won't impact your labs in a negative way. So that's biotin. Remember, it does not impact the gland. It does not impact thyroid function. It makes it appear like it impacts thyroid function because it's impacting with the test, the thyroid lab tests themselves. So that's number three. Number four, I'm going to put a little asterisk on these two here because these are kind of, well, I'll talk to you about it and explain it a little bit, but number four is iodine. Now, there's a lot of confusion about iodine, especially as it relates to thyroid patients. A lot of patients have been told to just avoid iodine flat out. Um, other patients believe that it causes Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Other patients believe that it is the cure to you know, fixing thyroid problems in, in a natural way. And the truth, like always, is really somewhere in the middle, okay? But iodine can be dangerous, which is why it's included here. And different from all these other three that we talked about, iodine can actually harm your thyroid gland. It doesn't do it all the time. And it typically only works or, or does this, has this negative effect if it's used in the wrong dose. So dose is very important when you talk about taking iodine. If your dose is too high, which a lot of people seem to seem to actually gravitate toward these high doses, then it absolutely can be harmful. And likewise, um, if your dose is very high and you are also deficient in selenium, so it's a very important nutrient here, selenium. We're not going to talk about it too much. But what I want to tell you is that if you have low selenium and you start taking a high dose of iodine, it can actually cause thyroid inflammation, which can trigger thyroid autoimmunity. So iodine is not necessarily a bad and damaging nutrient to your thyroid. I'm putting the asterisk here because it can be. It can hurt your thyroid gland. And you'll, I'll always find um, people who are watching these videos. And by the way, if you fit in this category, leave a comment below who have taken iodine in massive doses. We're talking 25 to 50 you know, milligrams per day, 50 milligrams per day, who have taken this high dose and who have triggered thyroid problems. They've either, they've either tri they've, they have either triggered Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease as a result of these incredibly high doses. So if, that fits, if you fit into that category, leave a comment below just as sort of a warning to other people who, who think that it's okay because I've always had people who argue with me that using these high doses um, is, you know, has fixed their problems. And I'm like, it's possible that it can help some of you, but the risk is not worth the reward. So keep that in the back of your head. So iodine, low doses, by the way, are absolutely necessary and required, but high doses are not. Um, if you've used any of my supplements, you do not need to worry about this. I dose them correctly. So the iodine also comes with nutrients like selenium. So do not worry about that if you're taking any of my supplements. But if you're using other supplements, you should be weary. Um, at least look into this and look at the dose. I have blog posts that talk about dosing and so on. Uh, the next one I'm putting an asterisk on here as well, and that is thyroid glandulars. So I've actually been very critical of these glandulars in the past, but I'm actually coming around to them um, and using them more and more uh, frequently. I'm actually seeing really good results. So I probably will change my mind and come out with a video about that in the future. But thyroid glandulars have the potential to be quite good, but they also can be quite harmful. And, but they're typically only harmful if they contain thyroid hormones. So this will make more sense once I explain to you what a thyroid glandular is. Now, a thyroid glandular is basically taking the thyroid gland from an animal, desiccating it up or drying it up, chopping it up, letting it dry out, encapsulating it, and then having you swallow it as a, as a supplement. So you can see that there's potentially a lot of good things in there because that sounds a lot like um, natural desiccated thyroid, right? That's basically how we get NDT, which is a thyroid medication. But the problem with a, a glandular is it's not supposed to have any thyroid hormones in it. But a lot of people, um, a lot of uh, manufacturers of supplements who, that have thyroid glandulars do not necessarily follow these safe rules. And so what they do is they have unregulated and unchecked um, and unverifiable amounts of thyroid hormone in them. So you might take a dose that has you know, five micrograms 
you might take a dose the next day that has 20, you might take a dose that has 15 or whatever. But the point though is, is you're getting random amounts of actual thyroid hormone, which is going to negatively impact your ability to test what's going on. It's gonna impact your labs, you know, potentially in a negative way. Uh, it might cause you to take too much thyroid medication uh, because again, it's, it's impacting your, your meds. Um, and it causes all sorts of problems. So if you can use glandulars without the hormones and you can verify that that is the case, which usually is if you're purchasing, purchasing these supplements within the United States, then that's generally okay. Um, provided there, there's some other qualifiers there that we're not gonna get into today. Um, but if you're getting it from overseas or something like that, you should be very cautious because this could be harmful for the reasons I just stated. So these are five supplements, and believe it or not, this is only about half of the supplements that I wanted to talk about. So I'll probably have a part two talking about the other supplements that you should be aware of if you have thyroid disease. But I want to hear from you. So if you've taken any of these, if you've, you know, this board kind of looks like a mess right now, now that we've marked it all up. But if you've taken any of these um, supplements in the past and you've had a negative outcome, I want to hear about it. So leave your comment below just so that you can, you know, help other people out and, and help them understand that these things can potentially have consequences for their thyroid health. health. If you haven't already, make sure that you go down to the comment section and you download my free thyroid PDF resources. Um, I have about eight free resources that you can download, which give you tons of information and are really helpful for stuff like this. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.